This video is about comparing mitochondria and chloroplasts, those organelles found in the eukaryotic cells, with bacteria, which are prokaryotic. And the reason for this comparison is evolution. Scientists believe that the mitochondria and chloroplasts evolved from bacteria. Let's begin with a little bit of revision. The organelle, known as the mitochondrion, is referred to as the powerhouse of the cell. It is so called because it's the site of cellular respiration. Cellular respiration is going to produce energy in the form of ATP. Chloroplasts are those organelles unique to plant cells, and they contain that pigment chlorophyll. However, you should note that not all plant cells contain chloroplasts. For example, there are none in the root hair cells. They're very important because they are the site of photosynthesis and it's all connected to chlorophyll, which is that green pigment which is used for harvesting light energy. Comparing the mitochondrion, the chloroplast and the bacterium, you'll notice many similarities. For example, a very similar shape. The DNA is very similar in how it's arranged. Also, why do mitochondria and chloroplasts have a double membrane? All three reproduce by means of binary fission and also all three contain similar sized ribosomes. Let's just look at some of those particular details we've outlined. The mitochondrion and the bacterium both contain DNA. And this is a great opportunity to revise a little bit of mitochondrial DNA which you encountered during genetics. Mitochondrial DNA is very stable, much more stable than nuclear DNA and for this reason it is often used in research. It comes from the egg only and not from the sperm. So your mitochondrial DNA was passed on from your mother only. Just to remind you as well that the chloroplast also has this circular DNA that's similar to the DNA found in bacteria. Mitochondria and chloroplasts reproduce by means of binary fission. The same way that bacteria reproduce. All eukaryotic cells contain mitochondria. So how did they end up within eukaryotic cells? Well, it's not in your course, but it's just amazing to know about this theory known as the endosymbiotic theory. So when you studied ecology, you studied the nitrogen cycle where you encountered symbiosis. You then encountered symbiosis again in digestion. This is when you have two or more organisms of different species living in close association and at least one benefits. Endosymbiosis is when one organism lives within another, bestowing benefit, so giving benefit. Endosymbiosis proposes that an ancient bacterium was taken into a host cell but not digested, and because all eukaryotic cells have mitochondria, we believe it happened to the mitochondrion's evolutionary ancestor first. So very simply, some type of bacterium must have been taken inside a host cell, but not digested. And this bacterium must have aerobically respired, producing energy for the cell. Eventually, this evolved into the mitochondrion. It is believed by some scientists that the original bacterium, as it was engulfed, entered through the host cell's membrane and it was surrounded by a vesicle. And it's this that gave rise to the outer membrane of the mitochondrion. Or it could be, as some scientists believe, that the original bacterial ancestor that was engulfed was a gram-negative bacterium and these have two membranes. So at some later stage, one of those host cells that had previously engulfed the ancestor to the mitochondrion engulfed another bacterium, this one a photosynthesizing bacterium, and this is what we think evolved into the chloroplast. It is thought by some scientists that when this ancestral bacterium, this photosynthesizing bacterium, was engulfed by the host cell, it was surrounded by a vesicle and this vesicle originated from that host cell's membrane. And this is what gave rise to the outer membrane of the chloroplast. Or was it simply that the original bacterium engulfed was a gram-negative bacterium, one with a double membrane? Just refer back to your scientific method and always remember that science can and does change as do theories. This is a truly excellent TED-Ed talk with the most fabulous animations and very straightforward explanation. I really highly recommend it if you want to understand endosymbiosis. For your exam, just ensure that you know the structure of all three really well. This is another great video and it's by the Royal Institution and you'll find it on YouTube so you can check that out. So now it's probably a good time to go back and revise evolution and the theory of natural selection as put forward by Darwin and Wallace. Wishing you all the very best of luck in your exams. Make sure you're using your textbook, you're doing lots of past papers, and most importantly, you're listening to your teacher's guidance. As always, the professional icons are all from the Noun Project. I'm a pro member, but I still want to credit the artists.